Okay, we'll look at the names I give you as soon as I get them. So right now we have our clerks. Just let me get the numbers, the names, sorry. To write them down. I want to mention something that uh, a lot of people who live at the ranch is very aware, but of those of you who aren't here all year, uh, this year we lost one of our very, very good employees in the HOA who, is, uh, who was Socorro Gomez. She used to work with the HOA for many years and she passed away for a, a cancer and we lost her. So right now we, we were a little bit delayed, like two minutes, but Serena is doing a very good job. But we really miss uh, Socorro. I think so all of you who met her know that she was a very kind and cheerful sure person. Thank you for listening to this.
Sorry? Can you make that different? Can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have handouts next year. <laughs> In big print. Uh, so this past year, with the approval of the supervisors in the budget, the resort fee is being split 70-30. 70% going to the La Ventana del Mar, HOA, and 30% at the mountain site. The current policy, which is, has been formalized and put into place about the ATV, UTV, off-road vehicles, bikes, and such, on La Ventana del Mar, for those of you who were at the developers meeting yesterday, they read the official statement. Uh, <coughs> due to illegal use, if you want to call it that, and lack of respect for the property, doing donuts on the golf course, the ATVs, UTVs from renters will no longer be permitted on La Ventana with our property. There is an enclosed fenced in area by the property management office across the street from the La Ventana del Mar entrance. If you have a registered vehicle as an owner with a vehicle sticker on it, be it an ATV, side-by-side, -side, whatever, you can bring your ATV, your vehicle here on the La Ventana. So if you want to go to breakfast, go ahead and drive your side-by-side, -side. but it has to have just like your car, an Elroy Ridge sticker on it. Some people said, well, I have a rail. I don't have a bill of sale. What do I present? Picture of it. You got a sticker on it on the ranch to get in and out. You have a sticker so you can bring it here. Off-road track, which is just about finished, and there'll be a published uh, track map, if you want to call it that. Uh, behind the property management office. There was a track there years ago. It's a seven and a half mile off track. It's not gonna impact any residential area at all. It's going straight back from the property management office and it'll be a marked trail. So if anybody, for example, like a renter over here, leaves his ATV over at the uh, approved area, wants to get out and drive around, he can drive around over there. Or take it down Saltita Road and go on the desert. Guest registrations by owners. If you have guests at your home, and I know a lot of people have guests at their home and have just gone to the pool and they haven't had guest registrations or little cards. It is really being enforced now so have your guest registration. You can do that online. You can go to the HOA office so they can get guest passes for anybody using the facilities. Four, four passes per, per lot. Car stickers and annual renewal. It'll go out in your packet for renewing your 2019 HOA dues. You will be required to present current certificates of ownership of the car, vehicle registration. And once again, if you have an ATV, you don't have a bill of sale for it, a picture of it. There has been incidences where people have bought cars they haven't told the HOA office that they don't own those cars anymore and they've gotten five stickers and they have one vehicle and they have been pilfered. So this year they're requiring everybody to bring in regist current registration of the vehicles you own and that would be here in the ranch. The next item, the HSBC to the BIM transfer. That was, who, anybody that wasn't here at the developers meeting yesterday? I think quite a few. All right. That was covered in detail yesterday at the meeting. 
Um, the Master Trust, if you have a Master Trust certificate, which is HSBC, there is paperwork that needs to be filled out to transfer that Master Trust HSBC to BIM. There is no cost involved for you to do that. If you don't have the paperwork and you need the paperwork, see Mara in the sales office. She has the paperwork that you need to fill out. And if you have two people on the certificate, each person needs to have their total paperwork filled out. There has been a lot of certificate paperwork that has been coming back because two people are on a piece of paper and a lot of errors and, and so it just it just increases the process time. So if you see Mara, she can tell you and, and give you the proper information for filling that out. Individual accounts, which was covered by Pat yesterday. If you have an individual Feta Camiso, there's several ways that you can handle it. Some people have done it on their own. Some people have handled it through one and well with the Elorado people. It's whatever you want to do. There will be a policy statement, if you want to call it that, put out in the newsletter and sent out to everybody as to what has to be done. I don't want to dwell on this too much because it is a complicated piece. Um, types of ownership. Some people on the ranch don't even know how they own the property. And I can really understand that because sometimes it's complicated. Last month, on the newsletter, there was an article on types of ownership. There were three different types. I have several copies here. If anybody wants to pick up a copy of this, I'd have to give it to you in type of ownership. Budget issues. BMC contract. Your negotiating team last year was considered consisted of supervisors from La Ventana and El Dorado negotiated a contract with Baja Medical. You will see, if you looked at the detail of the budget, that the projected cost is the same this year, or going to be next year, as it was this year. That is a budget, it's an estimate. It will be adjusted because the factor that they are using this year is based on the number of dues paying members. So that will be adjusted. We just had to put a number in there to follow through on that. So if you look at the estimated numbers for 2018 year and the estimated numbers of residents for 2019, you'll see that there's a difference. So don't look at the budget amount saying we're overpaying BMC. That number as per contract is going to be adjusted. Here's a touchy subject. Gary, Tom. El Rado Road. There's some roads that look pretty good. And there's some roads that it's a nice green belt out there. <laughs> there has been a little bit of problems from the day of the rain. Uh, we can't schedule when Rosa came. All right. We have three graders to cover the Mount side as well as La Matana. One grader was down, is still down. And I just got notice from Ricardo that the parts for that third grader are coming in Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon that early grader will be on the road as well. But in addition to that, we have two regular experienced drivers. One of those drivers, and if you know how medical appointments get scheduled for procedures in Mexico, 
it could be two months out that you schedule an appointment. One of those drivers had to take a two weeks leave of absence. One of the experienced drivers had to take a two week leave of absence. So he was gone on that Monday of the rain. So there was another driver taking his place, not as experienced, but we did put the grader out there. After the first incident with the one driver gone for two weeks, the other experienced driver had medical appointments for an eye problem. So one guy comes back, the other guys leave. So we've got one experienced and one inexperienced driver. And the inexperienced, we can't put them on roads to grade where there's red dirt and things like that. So now they're both back. Thursday we'll have the third grader going and we will be doing a lot better job in repairing those roads that I really feel sorry for if you have a Toyota Camry or a Honda Accord or something like that trying to get down the roads. I, a week ago Sunday, I drove most of the roads throughout the ranch and I really sympathize with some of your issues and, and what you've got to do. The, the protocol is to hit the main roads first which they did with Saltita Road, cars were stuck right at the entrance and grading down the other main roads. Uh, I know this been comment said, so oh, Hacienda del Sol hasn't even been touched. Well, it was, but no, the, the berms weren't filled in, the, the Royals and that, but they did go down and grade, so you at least had a one lane decent road. Abandoned property, a lot of people are concerned with what's across from their home, what's in the next block, what they drive by, and things like that. People have not been dues paying for six, eight, ten years. People have passed away, and now they got a deteriorating trailer on the property. By Mexican law, we cannot go into the property and remove things. There is a new municipal code that was just put into place this year, if you want to look at it, it's 54 pages long. Roberto printed it, and he translated it. No, he didn't translate it. I wanted him to translate it. And it, it, he's, it's taking him days to translate it. But through this municipal code, we can get the people involved from Mexicali slash San Felipe to go on to properties and help us with getting them cleaned up. But once again, when you look at cleaning up properties, it comes down to money. It comes down to where do you put that or what do you do with it in a budget? And it becomes, you know, if we had all sorts of money to do it, yeah, it is in our regulations that we can go on a property to clean up a property and bill the resident for it. But if the resident hasn't paid dues since 2013, how are we going to get the money if we can't even get the dues? So it's a snowball effect. Change of address. I uh, just happened to have a conversation with a lady that she didn't get a, a, a vote or proxy or papers. And they just bought recently over in uh, El Rado. Welcome. And if you do a change of address in the HOA website, you still have to update the information that Concord has. There's two separate entities and currently they don't mesh. So if you do it on the website, go to the HOA office, Serena or Olita will take that information and forward it on to Concord. Employee training. As Roberto had brought up in our town hall meeting last month, there is ongoing training classes, you're getting away from the ranch in Mecca Kelly, for supervisors and department managers. They in turn are filtering down to their people under their charge and going through I wouldn't want to call it sensitivity training, but it is in some cases. 
Uh, that has been done with activities where they've talked with, for example, the people that are playing volleyball, you know, play nice in the sandbox or play nice in the pool, you know, type of thing. And people are there and smiling. Uh, <laughs> were you in at that meeting? <laughs> so that's, that's ongoing. Um, current staffing, you may notice that from time to time, the Fearless Ready South Gate, the Regional Soul Gate, is closed. <coughs> We're anywhere between 15 to 20 employees down in all areas, pretty much in insecurity. And that is due in part of the strict restrictions that we have to employ somebody. Uh, everything from background check, uh, violations, they get printed, and it's not something that we just do locally, this is set out to do a background check on the employees to make sure that they don't have any arrest records. And there's a, and drug screening as well. So that becomes a part of the problem. Um, you may have noticed on your budget, we have a 5% or 4 5% increase, 4% here, 4% increase in our budget, the employees are going to be receiving a 6% increase. All the way up through, this is the second year in a row that we have given them an increase. Some prior years, they didn't get a wage increase at all. And just to give you some idea, that's basically keeping up with the cost of inflation. December of last year, the inflation rate was 6.77 in December. It went down in June to a low of 4.5. Right now, it's tracking over 5%. So it's looking back up. And right now, you know, the peso was like 20 to 1. So we're, we're trying, to, trying to help the people that need it and to keep up with current. Oh, and plus energy, that's up 19%. Not just gas, but propane and everything else. So that's, you know, it's a significant, significant increase. HMA website. A couple of months ago, I noticed on Facebook, and somebody posted, I'm down here, I'm cleaning block 39. Somebody said, oh, uh, great, I'm going to be here now. I'm doing 44 on my walk in the morning. And I thought that, hey, it, was, it was pretty cool and that people cared about that area. Um, many people don't know that every Monday morning, Ricardo has some of the maintenance crew doing Highway 5 from the gate. If you're out there at 7 o'clock in the morning, they're going up and down with their black garbage bags cleaning up the debris that's been accumulated over the weekend from traffic. One of the things with Facebook, how many people are on Facebook? Good, good. How many people are on the HOA website? Well, more than I thought. But still, still more on Facebook than the website. Um, I've seen questions on Facebook from, I live on the ranch and what do I do with my Vita Camiso? There are over 5,000 members on St. Felipe Channel. From New York to New Jersey to Hawaii to Canada and everything else. Do you want their opinion on what to do with your Vita Camiso on the El Dorado Ranch? So, somebody, somebody else came up with, um, Behind the tennis courts, I see the grader going. What are they going to build there? And somebody says, oh yeah, I saw that too. They're going to put up some palapas with all that stuff. No. People were using it as a detour route to get to the tennis courts. They ripped out an electrical line, and they had to dig it out and redo the electrical. That's why it's blocked off. But a bunch of people knew the answer on Facebook. Recently, when the 
screened-in, fenced-in area was going to be done for the off-road track. Somebody else posted, what's the graders doing over there? Oh, that's the off-road track. And you know, 20, 30, 40 comments on Facebook. And they knew, the guy from Canada, he knew what they were doing over there at the, uh, behind the uh, property management office. There are two ways you can get the right answer right away. You go on the website, do the drop down, site map, it shows you, ask a supervisor. That question goes directly to Steve, Ed, and I, and Roberto, just like that. And you'll get an answer that same day. There's many incidents where it has been asked a supervisor, we have driven out to the property. Oh, thanks for being here. Nobody has ever come out before. Well, we didn't know about it. If you use the ask the supervisor. The other day that we had dozens of this past week that we looked at at our supervisor's meeting on Wednesday was my road needs this, my road needs that. And, and we know that and we can appreciate that. And that would be the, the, the proper way. Some of the people that had requested, you know, I can't get to my front driveway because the road's washed out, they got taken care of before they did a main road so they can get access to their house. I know one resident that is a wash on the road to their house that he put one of the witch's cones there with tape around it so people wouldn't fall into the into the crack. I saw that last Sunday. So use the website. It's a good informational site. It is being updated and upgraded on a regular basis, working with Arturo, our web web guy. So if you just follow through with that. Thank you. I would like to turn it over to Ed Jones, who's got a few comments at this time. Thank you, Dave. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for that report, sir. The one problem we have down here is, um, of all you people that are here, there's hundreds of you that can't come here. They live in the United States, they live in Canada, and we've been trying for years and years to give them a way to have a voice in a meeting such as this. Now the proxy has always been available, but it has never worked very well. Now today, the supervisors from Seaside and Mountainside would like to thank those of you who participated in a brand new program called the Proxy Coordination Program. Uh, Denise Lavin, please stand up. She was the coordinator for Seaside, both Las Villas and La Latana. I was the coordinator for the Mountainside. Now I'm going to make a few comments and I'm going to ask Denise if she has any comments. I coordinated personally 25 proxies. Now what that means is those 25 people got a chance to say something today. And as you heard, there are several proxies in, in play here. Now, that many proxies were just wasted last year. I had 15 proxies at the office that I couldn't use because every person is limited to only two proxies. Not per lot, it's per person. So if you're a husband and wife, you can actually have four proxies. Now, there, been, there were some shortcomings in this program because it was new, and we're going to address them. Now, number one, proxies are limited to two per person. Some people here in the audience receive three or more proxies, and only two could be voted, the others got wasted. Number two, whiteout was used on several proxies. Markouts and corrections were used. That invalidates the proxy. In Mexico, an original document with no changes whatsoever, you know, the only uh, valid documents that we can use. Number three, proxy after proxy came in with no witnesses. Can't use it. Now, 
next year we're going to be issuing a new set of instructions to residents and make sure that they understand this is a learning process. Our goal is to get as many people to participate in their HOA as possible. Denise, do you have anything to add here? Um, one of the concerns that came up from one of our owners on the uh, seaside was if I gave someone my proxy, would they vote it the way I want it voted? And at that time, it was a month or so ago, we had an instituted a process. What has happened since is when you turn in a proxy now, we mark on the ballot that you're given, we mark a P, indicating it's a proxy. Then we actually, the people that are signing in, mark that ballot according to what the proxy says. Now some of the proxies didn't have it marked. They said, you know, they defer to the proxy holder. And that's fine, then we left the ballot blank. But we're trying to make sure that if you send in a proxy, your wishes will be voted. And so we did institute that. The other thing that we've done, and this came up today, is you're limited to two per person. When we gave you a proxy, we wrote your name down, passed it on down to Zarina, who then kept the list so that no person could have more than two proxies. So we're making sure that we're tightening things up, but hoping to get more and more involvement. So um, I thank Ed, because he was leading in this with the um, proxy delegates and what have you, and Martha, and I were concerned about the making sure because, as I said, one of the people that emailed me to get proxies said, well, you know, if you can't guarantee it's voted my way, I'm not going to use it. So we've worked really hard to address concerns to make sure that your voice can actually be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Uh, at the supervisor's meeting on Wednesday, this concern was brought up to all supervisors who work as a team along with HOA management and Martha brought up a motion that all proxies as received will be voted and then given to the person that's going to vote that proxy. All of those you had proxies you noticed that the proxy vote was already on your ballot and I want to thank Martha because I think this audit and guarantee of a proper vote will double proxies next year. Martha, do you have any comments? Okay. Thank you very much. And those of you who volunteered to receive proxies, thank you. Next year, I hope I can get a lot more uh, because we definitely want to uh, include people. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? No, it, it has to be assigned to you. See, and that's the problem. I got a proxy that was assigned to somebody and then they flighted out the name and put my name on there. Invalid. Couldn't be used. So, and like I said, now there's going to be a whole new set of instructions, but our goal is to include everybody here, even though they can't be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zig. Thank you very much, Ed. As you can see, that's what I mean about thanking them for the activity that they do at the Supervisors Committee and the support they give to the people who is not here, but we want to hear their voices into this SAP. Okay, the next uh, point in the agenda is uh, voting the owner initiative proposal, which reads, Effective January 1, 2019, no short-term resort renters from La Ventana and Mar Las Villas will be granted access to the Catch and Ninja Pool. All La Ventana and Mar Las Villas owners, long-term leasers, and guests holding a current 90 car will continue to have access to the Catch and Ninja Pool, as is the current policy. Complete initiative is available. Do we have a motion to go to this uh, uh, proposal? So moved. Second. Okay, now I proceed to open the floor for discussion. Please stay.
please, Mr. Ross. Chief, please, come over. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ross Wilkin. I own property on both sides of the ranch. I do not own any uh, rental property and I've never rented any property out. I'm going to read one more time exactly what this proposal says and read a little bit further down on the long form copy. It is proposed that, in fact, on Tuesday, January 1, 2019, the use of the Johnson Indian Pool will be restricted to property owners and those renting a home at El Dorado Ranch only. This area is commonly known as the mountainside. All La Ventana del Mar and La Ventana uh, owners, their guests, in long-term leases, that is, those who rent for over 27 days, will still have access with proper ID and passes. Then the initiative asks to describe the situation your initiative addresses. The initiative does not describe the situation it is attempting to change, mitigate, or eliminate. However, it does go on to mention some general statements about renters. The majority of the rental units on the Lavantanas, La Villas uh, condominiums located on the seaside ranch at Lavantana del Mar. The number of people occupying the rental condominium usually exceeds, vastly exceeds the normal occupancy of the unit. Most of the security violations and deliberate destruction of not only the condominium unit, but the common area as well, comes from those renting these units. The majority of renters of La Ventana del Mar and Las Vegas units are currently using the mountainside El Dorado Ranch pool. This, com this pool is commonly known as the Chachanilla Pool. The Chachanilla Pool was built and paid for by El Dorado Ranch Homeowners Association. The maintenance and security of the pool area is supervised and paid for by El Dorado Ranch Homeowners Association. What is the benefit of the HO to the HOA or the owners of your initiative if your initiative is adopted? First response was the pools will be given back to the HOA owners. Given back to the HOA owners. From the first day of the opening of our pool five years ago, the pool belonged to the Mountainside EDR Homeowners Association and HOA and has been available for the benefit of all ranchers, guests, and paying renters. There has never heretofore been a time the pool was only available to HOA owners. Is there a financial impact to the HOA if this initiative is adopted? Yes, substantial loss of revenue and possible small savings in operational costs. The outside EBR HOA currently receives 50%, which has now been changed to 30%. Collected for the Lava Time and Omar side short term rental units. This 50 50 split will most likely be modified, which it has been already before we even approved this, to 30%. But I would suspect now it will be totally eliminated because why should they have to pay the outside 30% if they can't use the pool? This will cost the outside. $45,000 per year, which is what the mountainside had been receiving before. Approximately 20 to 30 days a year, there will be substantially uh, less use of the upper pool. The remaining 92% of the year, there will be slightly fewer people in the pool because this pool initiative only addresses 20 to 30 days per year. Those days that there are holidays, and we have a lot of people coming down to the ranch. The other 320 to 340 days of the year, we don't have a crowded pool. We have no need for this initiative, but we're punishing all of our renters, and frankly, all of those who do use the pool, those other 320 days. Unless, uh, excuse me, this may result in as much as 5% reduction in chemical costs a saving far less than the revenue loss mentioned in number one above. Unless the pool is left unheated while open, leaving HOA owners to swim in a cold pool, there will be no savings in propane gas used for heating. In fact, it may cost more to heat an empty pool 
On those days, it would have been otherwise crowded with 98.63 human blood bodies. There was a mention that there would be savings on propane gas if the pool is not crowded all the time. Well, how do they know when you're planning on coming to the pool for a swim? Are they going to have the pool turned off until you get there and then turn it on and wait six hours for it to heat up? The pool will have to be heated all the time that it's currently heated. There will be no savings in propane. There may be an extra uh, cost in propane, however, in that, again, I've held in pools all my life. A crowded pool stays warm because there's people in it. Take those people out, it costs more to heat that pool. Number four, unless the HOA currently has two full-time security guards on duty to work only 20 to 30 days per year, there will be no personnel cost savings. There was a mention of a savings of two security guards if, if we initiate this. We do not have two security guards hired for 20 to 30 days a year. When extra security is needed, those guards are pulled from other areas of the ranch. So those guards will not be let go with the, this initiative. Now, and if they were, it would cost substantially to the ranch. And the Mexico does not allow you to let just let people go because you don't need them anymore. You have to continue paying them, and you have to have costs. Number five. I personally know of a former short-term renter who became owners or influenced others to become ranch owners. There's no way to directly measure the cost of losing the terrific advertising and public relations benefit of the Chachania pool. But I suspect it is considerable based on how much our amenities are used in advertising and promotional materials. You look at anything that promotes the ranch, that pool is shown. Other than the 20 to 30 days a year during certain holidays and special events, the upper pool is far underused and not utilized. It's virtually empty. We as volleyball players, and there's many of them here, oftentimes will bring down our short-term rental guests to help us play volleyball, to fill out more teams. And oftentimes we'll have full teams of people from various parts of Mexico that will play with us. And those people are the most fun people in the world to play volleyball with because they don't care who wins or loses. They're just there to have a good time. And I will miss those people dramatically if we institute this initiative. As stated above, from the first day of opening five years ago, the pool has belonged to the outside EDR Homeowners Association and HOA. And it's been available for the benefit of all ranchers, guests, and paying renters. There is therefore never been a time the pool was only available to HOA owners. Following this logic, tennis courts and roads on the mountainside should be off limits to La Ventana del Mar renters, and pickleball courts and roads on the La Ventana del Mar side should be off limits to mountainside renters. After all, they pay for them. It has already been uttered by many, myself included, and behind the scenes by many of our Mexican friends, guests, and yes, employees, that this initiative can be interpreted as racist, whether that's its intent, whether, whether, I, I understand that and I respect that response, which is why I have the next sentence, whether that's its intent or not. I'm simply saying what I've been told. The financial and public relations cost of this sort of reputation is immeasurable and not worth the risk. In my opinion, it is very unfair that an initiative that will have a dramatic effect on the revenues of both sides of the ranch can be cited by one side, while the other side must deal with the consequences and damages. This really is, is initiated by people who seldom use the pool, and I understand their point. The pool is crowded on occasion. I attempted to submit an alternate 
proposal that would have drastically uh, would have addressed all these issues, but for one reason or another, I was unable to submit it. But I think rules changes will accomplish the same thing uh, without being quite so draconian. So I only ask that you consider that in your voting, and then when then we address the issues, we directly address the issues of overcrowding, misuse, and misbehavior at the pool, rather than building a wall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roswell. And Mr. Ed Jones will take a microphone now. Hey, good morning, everybody. As I said a while ago, my name is Eddie Jones. For those of you that don't know me, I have been your homeowner representative since day one of the HOA. That's 13 years. Thank you for re-electing me every two years. I'm here to represent you. These meetings, the General Assembly meeting and the Town Hall, are created so you, as owners, can know how your money is being spent, so you can have a voice, and so you can understand what's going on. That's one reason we're trying to include more people in the proxy program. Now, representing you is what I wish to do today once again. How many of you were at the town hall meeting? Oh, pretty good. If you'll bear with me, those who were at the town hall, I'd like to give you some numbers and some facts that you probably don't know. Now, first of all, I have been accused of trying to start a war between the seaside and the mountainside. That simply isn't true. I just want to give you some facts that you need to know so you can make an informed decision about how you vote on this initiative. Now, many have said the Elder Rotter Ranch is one big family. Well, yes, that's true with some exceptions. The seaside is a resort. There are three pools, two bars, two restaurants, a golf course, and a walk to beach. If Juanita is open up again, make that three of everything. The mountainside is a retirement community. We were here long before a lot of time was there before. We bought enough property here to get a developer enough money to even create love and time. Now, the pool complex on the mountainside is private property entirely funded by the mountainside HOA. I've had a lot of emails by a lot. Uh, as of last night, Dick Peterson and I were still getting emails. Guess who they're from? Condo owners complaining that they're going to lose money on their rentals. Okay? Now, they haven't got any money invested in your pool. Only you have money invested. If this initiative is approved, uh, it will, in fact, give the pool back to you. All we're asking is the pool was built by residents for residents and not a commercial venture. Yes. By the way, the complaints I've had from Seaside people, if you don't own property in an HOA, you don't have a voice in an HOA. Now in all fairness, many, many people live on Seaside have dirt lots or other properties on the mountainside. And thank you for paying your dues. It helps us to grade your roads over there. Now, Mr. Wilkins has taken a position completely opposing what the owners of mountainside wish to do. I didn't make up the following facts. They can be easily checked. And again, for those at the town hall, bear with me. Two HOAs were created in January 2005. El Dorado Ranch HOA, La Ventana HOA. Las Vegas is not an HOA. It is part of the La Ventana HOA. Now, from the very beginning of the HOAs, the EDR HOA pays La Ventana $360,000 a year. That's about $1,000 a day for just the privilege of using the Palapa pool. Now, the beach is public, Juanito's at the time was public, so that entire amount of money was just to take care of the pool. Now, we opened our pool in May of 2013. By that time, we had given Seaside about 2.5 million.
millions of dollars. They didn't use any of that money to increase their, uh, improve their situation on uh, improving the pool or being able to buy equipment to heat and so forth. Now, back then, uh, uh, some time ago, a group of EDR supervisors and I approached Cliff Alvin, the former HOA administrator for the HOA, to build a pool complex since the developer who was supposed to do it could not. He had his $50 million credit line jerk with no notice and that put everything uh, brought to the still. This was approved by the HOA homeowners that we would build a pool complex and there's still a community center building that needs to be built over there. Not one penny was contributed from Seaside to the pool complex on the mountainside. Now many of the people over there have been simply lied to. Even as last night, the, the uh, email we got from the young lady, a person said, well, both sides paid for the pool. Well, they were simply lied to. It's strictly your pool, your money, your maintenance, and nobody else contributed to it, so it's your pool. It's private property. Now, even though we paid about $2.5 million to use a block of pool in the community, which I was part of, I uh, declared that a lot of town owners, their families, their guests, and long-term lessees, there's a difference between long-term lessees and three-day renters. They can still use the pool complex at no charge. Now, ED owners, families, guests, long-term lessees, we can still use the Palapa pool, and that seemed reasonable to me. We use theirs, they use ours, no charge to either side. Pretty reasonable. Now, this is interesting. When the condos were built, they built three pools over there. There are two in operation. Guess what? The condo wants to come use your pool. You can use a condo pool. Did you know that? Okay. Now, the first year your pool was open, the mountainside still paid 50% of the propane bill for a lot of lots of pool. Now, time to rent this, this is going to really piss you off. <laughs> Condo rentals can issue as many as six wristbands depending upon the number of bedrooms. It's two wristbands per bedroom. Now, until a month ago, every condo reservation was given eight wristbands. Okay? Now, when Roberto found that out, it talked about being pissed, he wasn't pissed. He got that crap straightened out. Now, there's no limit of children under 12. Now, what that really means is a three-bedroom condo can have six adults and maybe six children. What's that, 12 bodies? Guess what? You can have four and four kids. That's half as many. That violates the EDR rules and regulations. Now, there are those who said, well, it's investment property. They don't count as guests. I don't care if you're a guest or a renter, you're a warm body taking up room at the pool. Now, I was always had the impression that the reservation fee was $35. $30, $30 for the reservation fee, and $5 for the wristbands. Uh, Martha says, no, it's $30. So the numbers I'm going to give you are going to be wrong by uh, $5. Okay? The condo reservations make up 83% of the reservations. Now, $35 per reservation, that's 2,857 reservations per year. Okay? 83% of that is 23.71. Now, at an average, and I went to the websites for the property management companies who have no investment here, they average about $144 a night. Well, that brings in a minimum of $341,000 a year to the condo owners. Now, let's be general. Let's cut that average to $100 a night. That still brings in $237,000 a year with no investment. Now, Mountainside will see only a small part of the reservation fee because with this initiative, we're only going to keep 30% of it 
they're going to take 70%. Now, I only used one night as an example in my opinion. Most of those reservations are for two nights, so basically if you want to, double that amount of money. Now, seaside folks complain they cannot heat the pull the pool, don't have lounges. Well, how about reinvesting some of that profit? Well, now, in discussing this with a lot of town supervisors and lots of new supervisors, they correctly point out that the HOAs are non-profit and cannot pay the outside money, it becomes taxable. Well, Pat Butler owns that pool over there, not the HOA. So why don't the property management companies and the condo owners get together with Pat Butler on a joint venture and heat the pool and, and improve the pool, do whatever is necessary. Now remember, none of the property management companies or condo owners may invest in an outside pool complex. Again, some condo owners and some property owners seaside on dirt lots, no question. Now, one property management company advertised on Facebook, Brandon Air Mattress Down will get you a wristband. What does that do for you? Now, let me give you one more set of uh, numbers and I'll get out of here. In 2014, there were 12,738, now these are uh, attendance numbers at your pool. Rivers, 12,738 with 289 kids. 2015, that number dropped to 6,984 renters and 3,872 kids. 2016, 7,500 renters, 4,174 kids. 2017, 9,256 renters, 5,711 kids. Now, that's all visitors, so you've got to take 83% of that, but the numbers still tell you how many visitors we get in our pool. So, I urge you, please vote yes to get our pool back. Thank you. If you don't use the pool, you don't have a problem. Let's put it this way. Let's say Easter weekend, you have never used a pool and you bring your family down and you go, well, I'm going to show them a good pool. You go over there, there's no place to sit down because all the chairs are taken up and there's kids running up and down. They're in the pool with uh, inappropriate diapers. So, you know, think about it. Vote for your fellow owners that live here that do use the pool. So they can count them, they will count 
they can pick them up too. And you can go to the green table, our clerks, please. Greg Sherling. You can go to the green table over there to sit down and count the votes once we are finished. Uh, one thing, uh, you saw Mr. Pat Butler coming in right now to talk to me. He is abstaining to vote in this voting.
General Assembly meeting 2018, Elder Orange. Thank you. Next one. Uh, we do the walkway lights at Catalina Pool. We finish with all of them. This is a one one way work because uh, all of them were plastic ones in the past. They were very costly, $150 a piece, but they got broken very easily. So these ones are forever. Next, please. Horseshoe stages, repair and painting. This uh, was the work they were. This is the final work. Next, please. But an pool bridge maintenance. You can see how they were. They were staying. Right now we are changing them. Uh, we are doing it by steps, by phases, but we will finish doing them. Next, please. Catanilla pool axles row repair. We have to do it again because Rosa helped us to destroy it. <laughs> but we will redo it very, very, very soon. Next, please. New clocks for Catanilla pools. We have uh, been requested this many times, so right now you can have the time over there. So if you have to go to take lunch at a certain hour, you will know. Next, please. 40 lunch shares of Catanilla pool. These were launches that the, the material was already worn out, but we kept in the storage, so we returned them to our perfect condition. So this was a big sale. Next, please. Six pergolas construction at Cachanilla Pool. We were having a lot of trouble with the umbrellas that we used to bring. They were very expensive. They, we have to wait for months for them to arrive. So we talked with the architect Montaño, and he designed these pergolas. At the beginning, they didn't have a, a net over them, so this was causing uh, some discomfort around the people that maybe the people can get uh, zebra stripes. So we put in the top, we put uh, the cover with nets, so that problem is solved. And we put protections around so they is not here. So right now we have several of them, we have six. And we make another one at the water heat pump to protect them on the, with the rays of the sun. Next, please. Pergolas, this is the construction, how they are doing it, going on. Uh, uh, so you just see how they were working. It's our own personal doing them, so it's not extra expenses hiring labor, labor work. This is our same uh, maintenance uh, crew. Next. Uh, we changed two shades of Cachanilla pool. Right now we only have two more to change and they all be very, very nice. <laughs> Next, please. Water leaks in bathrooms from Cachanilla pool. Sometimes uh, water uh, breaks out with the pressure and so we have to repair it. Next, please. Water leak in Cachanilla pool area. This was a huge top, a huge pipe. So we have to dig down, take it out, clean it out. Um, do it again and cover it back. Next, please. Jacuzzi shower cesspool. We didn't have a cesspool, so we did one. Right now, all the water that is uh, from the jacuzzi and from the shower, which is next to the jacuzzi, it goes into this cesspool that we make and we cover it back. Next, please. Catania Pump Room Iron Stairs. This one, the last year, we have two accidents in these stairs. Uh, they were like the ones that uh, that vertical. So when they go down, they woke up. If they have the boots wet, they got slippery. So we have two accidents with our crew. So we make them in this way. So now, right now, they're very secure. Next, please. Uh, we bought a new water heater at Cachanilla uh, main pool. This is in the crate. And right now it is like this. This next year in 2018 in the budget it's another one. We, we have two. So we replace one. The next one we will replace the other one. So we want our equipment to be at its best. Next please. New umbrellas and storage. We were requested uh, that once we start constructing the pergolas, some of our owners say, well, we would like to bring our own umbrellas, but we need some place to storage them. So we have them. We just receive another request for making another storage, but we have been checking the number of uh, umbrellas inside and it's not full. So we will check once we see that it's to capacity, we will do the other one. Next one, please. 
cyber innovation in the Chinese pool area. This is the rules, so yes, we have the intent this year to be applying more strictly the rules of Cachinilla. There are several ones. Uh, we are working with that. As a matter of fact, yesterday I have a meeting with all the activities team. And we will include very soon the security people. So uh, they all know that we have to be following the rules of the pool. Next, please. New grids installed around Jacuzzi at Cachanilla. These ones we did it at once because for sure it's a less bigger area than the main pool. They, all of them right now are very nice. Next, please. Uh, you can see here more grids installed around the Cachanilla pool. These were the way they were. Right now they look like this, brand new. Next, please. Handicap handle standard Jacuzzi showers. Uh, the Stones get slippery when wet, so right now we we put the handlebars so the people can be can feel safe. And in case that they sleep, they have a holder. Next, please. Uh, we bought a new rain tap water here at the for the jacuzzi again at the kitchen pool. This was the condition the old one was. Right now we have here the new one. Next one, please. Bathroom remodeling at Cachanilla. This is in the back next to the library. We remodeled this bathroom. It was in a good condition. This next year we are going to remodel all the ones that are in the back. So we want them to be good for the people who is using the tennis courts or they are using the library. Next please. Or if they go to the activities office to perform um, Spanish classes, reunions of the different clubs like fishing and horticulture, different clubs that have been formed. Next one, please. Poker. Yoga, poker. Yes. No, there is a lot of activity, let me tell you. As a matter of fact, we opened the back door of the activities room because it was a big problem crossing during the activities because the guys have to come in and go out. So right now they use the back door and they are not disturbing the activities that are on the main, main floor. Next please. Activities barrels, no smoking signs. Still we have some people smoking at the, at the bathrooms. Uh, you have been hearing here and sometimes before that our residents want to, uh, us to perform on the rules about what we put, like no smoking, like not this, not that, so please help us. No speeding on the roads, the slow, uh, I hear that. <laughs> Next please. Tennis club steps. Uh, this one was done with the help of the tennis club. They have been very helpful. Uh, our crews were doing the steps in the stone. But the tennis club put uh, plans and the developer uh, give the bookabilias to make this area beauty. This is just one part of the whole project. Next please. But the uh, final is very, very pretty. It's a very nice place to go see it, have a water bottle, but I prefer a wine glass. <laughs> Tennis card number one is redone. You can see here the guys welding, taking out the uh, posts that were not good anymore. We changed them, we replaced all the, the, the base of the fencing. So right now they are very good. We replaced everything in the net that was damaged. So it's becoming very, very nice. Right now the whole five cards are done. Next please. Tennis card number done, this was done totally, uh, resurfacing and everything. Next please. Here is uh, how they were, right now how they finished to me. Next. Number four, the same thing. This year we, two, we do two tennis courts, uh, finished the uh, number one uh, in the fencing and all that. And next please. And um, B, convert the pickable court to tennis court. It was a lot of work. You can see our guys here working in the sun. They use very good big hats to protect themselves. And uh, we cover the holes. Next one, please. And they start painting them. And 
the final work is like it's coming down to see. Right now, all the area looks like this. We find five tennis courts and we have a tennis center in uh, Cachinilla. So this is the final work. You can see, for example, at eyesight that next year we will have to repaint this one and this one. Because the sun here is inclement. It's so strong that it dries the paint and all that. Next please. Trash containers repair. From time to time they get damaged or with the wind or water. Or for certain reasons, we discovered that somebody hit them with their cars, so we had to fix them. It's not a way to find who was. I'm pretty sure nobody comes and says, you know, I hit it. <laughs> Next, please. Non sleep tape on my office. I have flight like three times in that stairs. So, uh, thinking of the people that go to my office often, I, I call my guys and say, put some railings and make some non-sleep tapes on the steps so the people feel safe. Next, please. Maintenance desk. We are making our own furniture. So we are saving a lot of money too. Because the cost of doing a desk is a lot less than buying a new one from any supplier. Next, please. Uh, this is the... Uh, Two years ago, we made the storage building, which closes the maintenance office and the administrative office of security. So we did the, the warehouse, but we didn't have the offices. We did them this year. So he says that they were working on them, and this is how they look right now. This is forever, for whoever knows Roman, this is his office. I think so it is the first time that he has had a real office and he is very, very happy to have it. Next. This is the insulation that we did on the accounting office roof. Uh, you can see that uh, the guys are applying right now the painting, which is the final step of it. Next, please. Human resources office starts paint. It was wood, it was rickety, it was risky, so anybody who comes to, to ask for a job in El Dorado, HOAs, they have to go through that rickety old uh, wood uh, stairs and they didn't look good, it was not giving a good face. So we make it in, in steel, we make it in, uh, in uh, metal, uh, so it is going to go for years and years to come. Next. Computer furniture installation and monitorial gate. This, uh, soon we are going to have a new program with a gun to read the IDs of the owners. So that will speed the entrance for whoever doesn't have... Uh, no, sorry, this is for the labor people, the people who is working at the ranch. So we, we will be having lines for people coming in. Next, please. Repair well at the HOA office. This is one of our uh, residents, he hit the office, he had a problem with his car, he lost control and he hit the wall. This, this we saw him and he paid for it, so we just repair it. Next one. Basel del Sol tree journey repair. Right now we have many more to repair thanks to Rosa again. She wanted us to decorate the ranch again. Next please. Basel del Sol number one journey repair, we did it. It looks very nice too. We have, like I say, we have to repair some of them. Next. Dog park amenities. The dog park committee has been very active to helping the, their friends who have dogs at the ranch too. So uh, they have been working very hard. And uh, Sue Green is the head of the committee and she has been asking us for do some labor, but they supply the the money to buy, for example, the, the, the benches, uh, different things that are for the dog use. Right now they propose a, or another, another change in the dog part, so they are providing the money to buy the materials. We will just do the labor. So this is advancing. And there's many, many people happy because they have a safe place to go with their dogs and they can play and have a good time. Next, please. Uh, remember that we have coyotes running the ranch.
research, they were looking mainly for water. And there were some owners that were feeding them. Be careful, coyotes are no dogs. And in a pack, they can be very wild and be very dangerous. So we make water tanks in the edges of the ranch. So when they are thirsty, they come, drink, and go back to their habitat. Next. Speed signs. We do them bigger. This was a request by one of our residents. So we did it. Uh, right now the people can see it, but I think so. we put it in a blind side because many people doesn't see it. They go boom, 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 boom. I hear it from my, from my uh, office. And by the way, we write wrong mountain. We put maintain, maybe it's for that. Next one, please. Red dirt added to Saltito Road communities and transits. Okay. We did it at the, we do this usually at the beginning of the year. Right now we are doing again in 2019. Well, let me tell you that Rosa take away a lot of our road, their road. It's very expensive, so it's going to be a huge expense. Good thing we have a reserve for road maintenance. Besides a normal budget. Uh, this is the maintenance we did during the year to, to Saltito Road. Right now, you, I can tell you that Saltito Road was broken at least in seven parts. Uh, so, with so many other roads. As a matter of fact, in February, in Town Hall, I will show you a map showing all the breakage that we suffer in the whole ranch and the roads. Next, please. Electric road maintenance. We did the maintenance during the year too, so you can see that it was good. Right now it's pumping, but we are working on it too. Next. Uh, so it's all the same thing. We were working. So uh, I'm represented. Next, please. Santito Road maintenance again, second time in the year. Next, please. Added red dirt added to Toyon Avenue. Next, please. This was done in old Toyon. The other hand on Rosa was coming out, we'll wait another year. Right there added to Los Toros Street. So we were already starting, not just in the main roads, we were starting to do the other roads. Next please. Right there added to Power Street. Next please. Maintenance of Vista del Sol, Vista del Mar and Ellipse Roads. This was the first rains that we had that not were as heavy as Rosa, but you can say the kind of damage they made. And Rosa was 10 times stronger. Next, please. Maintenance of Vista del Sol, Vista del Mar, and Lips Road. Same thing. Next, please. Maintenance of Vista del Sol, Vista del Mar. All of these are views so you can see how the work was progressing. Next. This was all the roads here that are marked in yellow, we did last year. And we were thinking of doing all the rest that are not in yellow this year. Unfortunately, all, a lot of this work is gone. We will have to restart doing it. But we will keep you informing in this sound wall meeting how we are progressing. Next, please. This is in Red O2. You can see that we work in the ellipse and we work in all the main roads, going to all the communities, and we start doing the, the roads that are where the most people is living. There are some areas that nobody lives, they are in black. Next, please. New pump installation at Camino Nuevo Security Gate. This was the way it was, right now it looks like this. Next, please. Water pump cover at Camino New Gate. We request the people to cover their constructions in all the ranch in accordance with TRC regulations, CCRs. So, we have to comply too. We are doing it. We are covering our own things. Next, please. General maintenance at White Gate. This is in the end of the Saltito Road. We make a new tower so the guard here can go up and see uh, far away for security. Next, please. Saltito Road, New Iron Barrier Gate. These uh, barriers they deteriorate with time, uh, with the humidity and all that, so we have to redo them from time to time. Next. <laughs> Electronic man replacement at Saltito Gate. Uh, 
This one has been changed maybe like 12 times already since the time that we installed it. Uh, some people doesn't know how they work. When people pass and they try to go in the second and they get it, the bar coming down, they break it. Uh, so the people who break it pay for them.